What is up everybody, Bobby here, Nintendo Guru, time for the little breakdown, the whole rigmarole and all that good stuff. That is a shout out to our patrons on Patreon, we want to thank you guys all for making us better. Um, there's some changes going on on Patreon, and we just want to, I want to address this real quick. Uh, we don't agree with the additional money that Patreon is throwing onto the patrons, so if you have to make adjustments and such, we understand completely. Uh, we're not going to hold it against you. We're not going to be upset or any of that. We did put a big post on our Patreon, in our Discord, all that stuff. But we just wanted to say it again. Like, we, we love you guys for all the support. We thank you for all the support. And um, do what you got to do. And, and we're, it's never going to change our relationship with you guys. It means the world that you guys are doing anything. And I don't understand what Patreon is. Thank you, honestly. With that, though, I want to give a shout-out and a thank you to our gold executive producer, Sheldon Bendick. Our executive producers, Nick Militia, James Johnson, Jesse Armstrong, Glocko Schaefer, David Ray, Michael Drummy, Brendan Myers, and Aaron Doherty. Thank you guys so much. On to the show. Guru, joined by my best friend in all the land, Toby Thornton. What is up, Toby? What is up, Bobby? <laughs> also, I am joined by the greatest co-host in all of podcasting, Sean Capri. What is up, Sean? What is up, Bobby? Last, <laughs> but definitely not least, no the people's champion of podcasting, Mr. Yeah. Bad himself. What is up, Joseph Moran? Uh, I, I, lo- I love how just... Sean Ruined just it. mimics everything. They're, just, they're both idiots. He's got to go on both. <laughs> I love on. it so much. It's the last time you're coming on this show. Well, technically for a little bit, yes. One of yeah. us. Um, One of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, today we're going to finalize our Game of the Year uh, chat mm-hmm. that we started last week. and we, So we brought Joseph back to kind of complete the, uh, the the journey here that we're going to do. Um but let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek out. Shout outs, shout outs. Yes, it's time for shout outs. Josh Stapleton, Antonio Gia, and Luke Lore. Um, oh, who am I missing? Adam Leonard, not to brag. Toby, <laughs> what are you geeking out about, Toby? Uh, I'm geeking out about the Game Awards. And in particular, one award, um, the Industry Icon Award that went to Carol Shaw. And mm-hmm. she, like, that was such a cool moment. I think that was one of the best moments of the whole show. And, you know, when she came up, she was talking about her history and the game she used to work on. And it really, like, shone a, a spotlight on her. And I just thought it was really, really good. It made me a bit emotional. And, you know, I love seeing stuff like that. It's, it's just a good celebration. You didn't, Bobby laughed at her. No, no, I'm, I'm laughing because it immediately makes me think of our live stream that we did. <laughs> and Joseph says, she's like a little Yoda. I want to put her in a backpack and carry her around in backpack. <laughs> she was, she was adorable. <laughs> and I, so I immediately started thinking about that. And it just made me start laughing. Um, <laughs> she, you think she went home from the awards and just grabbed her, her little blank. Like, mm-hmm, time to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> rest, rest time. <laughs> it was, no, I agree. It was, uh, it was definitely really good. And, and she that was, was awesome. She was, yeah, she was very, like, humble and, and, and just I mean, very adorable. Yeah. Another standout moment, obviously, uh, Eiji Aonuma, when he pulled oh, the sword out. Like, you, that was that, that put a tear to my eye as well. Like. Oh, good God, you're such a sissy. That's, a, that's, a, that's the Miyamoto moment. Yeah, exactly. He he is surpassing me and my own. I'm oh, telling you. Ooh, don't, don't, do that. don't say that. Yeah, let's let's relax. Don't say that. that. Just calm. In the modern, yeah, maybe in the modern cool. era, he's, you think he's, he's he's already surpassed him in terms of Zelda. So Dude, he only he, handles one game. Stop it. Yeah, but he's he's taken the mantle and he is the running mantle that the guy like, created. Don't ever blasphemize. I'm just Miyamoto saying again. he's taken the series in directions that Miyamoto never did. Listen, PlayStation boy, know your role. Stay in your lane. Stop it. <laughs> Sean, what are you geeking out about? Um, Al Numa. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm geeking out about Star Wars and that it's coming out on well Thursday. It, I don't the, the release dates are weird. It's yeah. like Thursday, Wednesday, midnight. So I'm seeing it on Friday. Soon it'll be starting I still on Mondays. don't know. 
Exactly. Like, yeah, midnight on Tuesday. Yeah, so technically, uh, I'm seeing it on Friday afternoon. And then that is Friday morning is my last morning of work of 2017. Nice. So I don't know a thing about Star right. Wars. I'm going to go. We're going to throw the baby at somebody. I'm not even really sure who it is. Throw the baby at somebody. Throw, you can like, throw the baby my way. Here. No, you got to take care of your tushy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were you uh, were you media blackout then? Because I haven't seen anything. I don't know Wars. a damn thing. And like, yeah. even when it comes up on Battlefront too, like scenes are like inspired. I think they were, they had that on the Game Awards, mm -hmm. and it's like scenes inspired by the last. Year. I'm like, I don't, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I don't know yeah. anything about it, and I'm so pumped about it. I've done, I've done good, guys. I, di I did good. And I saw yeah, a couple dude. trailers, but that's I'm not as I, bad as Joseph. I, I, saw Joseph I haven't. In. Sean, no trailers. How do you how do you miss trailers, man? Or I, you, listen, man. This is this is my thing. I I've yeah. gone on rants about this before. If you want to just not see it, you just don't see it. Yeah, it's true. I just think it's hard with what we do because you're yeah. you know you're on Twitter, you're on social media, pretty prevalent, and it's just like it pops up all over. The place. I think I actually still have it muted. I muted it a long time ago. I think okay. that's actually one of the so Star Wars. I think mm -hmm. like I'm probably missing important things about stars mm -hmm. or wars. Or Jedi, I don't know how, what Jedi's could be, but I'm mm. I'm muted on a couple of those key gotcha. terms, Bobby. Gotcha. So I'm good. That makes sense. Yeah. Joseph, what are you geeking out about? Honestly, I'm also geeking out over about a Star Wars. Because um, mm -hmm. the one thing I needed to like know is like the first impressions. So we're good. Let's just say that I'm excited. I'm ready. My body is ready. I am seeing it 1:30 in the morning. Wow. On Friday. And then going to see it at 7 o'clock on Friday again. Holy cow. So, again, I'm going to... Uh, Force Awakens, I watched nine times in theaters. You're insane. I'm going to watch this what movie nine times. With you? Yeah, that's something wrong with I can't, you. You know you know what? I I can't like say I can't say the, the Dark Knight I saw six times in theaters. Yeah, exactly. So. Bobby, you just told us all these games you just bought. You know, like hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars. Are you going to play? Are you going to play Pitfall? Of course not. You don't want to crease the box. Anyway. I've already opened the box, man. But I also want to geek out over a human being that stole the show for me at the Game Awards, and that's Yosef Ferris. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, oh. What game is he making? I can't even... A <laughs> way out. Yeah, he's making a way out. Dude, Poor this Jeff guy, Keighley, man. You know, I felt so bad for Jeff Keighley for the first time in my life. Yosef <laughs> Ferris, whatever <laughs> cocktail of drugs he was on, Oh, he was we movie. need we need him, you know. Yeah. Like we need we need to just at least know the source of this guy's. Madness. I was sitting there thinking, like, man, how long before EA pulls the funding on this game? And just like, <laughs> no, you know what? It's so clever. Like he planned to do that all along. It's you think everyone so? everyone's talking about him and yeah. his game now. Yeah. Like, well, not to, I think I think that was the cocaine and not him that planned <laughs> that out. But because <laughs> to me, I was just like. The first sentence this guy t like was talking, it was very like Italian. It was very like like European esque he's way Spanish, of like. Spanish, isn't something. he? I thought it, I th just thought it's a Spanish blood sugar. That's all, that's the only drug he's got is his his DNA. Yeah. Maybe he's from Barcelona, he's but nonetheless, I was like the first sentence. I was like, this guy's gonna go off the rails. It's just about a time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's he's talking to me like he's about to pitch a timeshare. So I'm like, something ain't right here. There's good. like. Was, would you actually would, would you actually think of his game though? I think the game is unique, man. I think it's yeah, really it looks cool. nice. Looks good. I I think it's one of the most interesting games from E3, and yeah. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, me too. It looks good. Um, myself, I'm geeking out about just a crazy week weekend that I had. Um, started off Friday. I get invited by Rogers Base to come on and do a f impressions review on uh, Fire Emblem Warriors which was just awesome, a 30-minute conversation we had, which then he turns around and invites me to come to his Game of the Year conversation, which is happening Tuesday night, which I'm just humbled, man, and so appreciative to be asked to go do that stuff. And then last night, I uh, I got to hang out for an hour with Colin Moriarty, and uh, just, man, I, I'm, I, it's still it's surreal, dude. It, it really Bobby, is. Bobby, like, you know what, right? It feels like to me that Bobby is on a rocket ship right now, right? right. Bobby is taken off into space, and we're all clinging on desperately to his his coattails. Like he's dragging us with him. Dude, I don't. Everything I say is we. Like even my post yesterday, I'm like we, not Bobby. We. It's us. It, it's not like. Well, relax. I'm proud of you, Bobby. It's, I'm it's proud of you too, Beyonce. Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's, I this is Justin the, the dusty but that's okay. child that's all right. I don't think I'm ready for this jelly, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, no, it was it was man, it was really really surreal to to talk to him, and um, it was funny because he actually went places that I didn't think he was going to go, and um, not too deep, but a little bit, and you, because before the conversation, before we start, I was just like, look, man. I'm not going to ambush you with a whole bunch of kind of funny questions and things like that. Like, that's not what this is about. I just want to talk games. I just want to hang out with you for an hour and talk. And he was like, no, nah, man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, um, and, and, and he, he did. And then you should have ambushed him. No, I would never do that. And then he started, he started bringing up, you know, the kind of funny stuff a little bit because he started to touch on, you know, his, uh, his year, his debacle of a year, as he was calling it, you know, this year started to fall apart. But, dude, it, it, so good. And so many amazing compliments coming on now. Like, people are just so excited to hear Colin talking games again. Um, yep. That was just unreal. Like, sitting there talking Mega Man to Colin Moriarty was just like, mm. holy crap, this is this is happening, like, right now? Like, this mm. is insane. But I had, I love, <laughs> I, whenever I get someone on, it's kind of has made little shots at Nintendo. I always started off with, so why do you hate Nintendo? And, um, <laughs> so I did it to him, and he was just like, I don't, I don't hate Nintendo. What are you talking about? Like, So I have to do that every chance I get. So it was, that was fun. Um, so let's jump into the episode. Last week, we did a thing where the four of us came together, and we kind of compiled what we mm. felt games should be the top uh, games of the year or in the nominations. Real quick, I just want to run through that list. Uh, Toby had nominated Mario Rabbids, SteamWorld Dig 2, Evil Within 2. Uh, Sean had done Nex Machinima, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> no, hey, my, my, so my, my, mispronunci- my mispronunciation. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Cuphead, Shadow of War, Destiny 2, Call of Duty, World War 2. Joseph had done Resident Evil 7, Horizon Zero Dawn, Super Mario Odyssey. I had done... Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Metroid, Samus Returns, and Splatoon 2. Some of our stuff overlapped. That's why Sean had five and the rest of us had three. So then what we did was we I created a poll, put it out there for people to vote on. Um, and, and who you guys nominated, you took that list, you whittled it down to five. So what those nominations are, Cuphead, Horizon Zero Dawn, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Resident Evil 7, and then Super Mario Odyssey. So now we will now rank those Mm. games from 5 to 1 and then ultimately create what we determine as to be the game of the year uh, from the gaming gurus. So, um, Toby, I'm going to start with you. What Mm -hmm. is your number 5 game on the list? I'm really sorry, Sean, but it's Cuphead. I, n- I know that it's a strong pick for you, but... Whoa, okay. Whatever. <laughs> so... Oh, I'm Sean. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Sean. So, it's only getting one point from me, but it's it's because, uh, you know, it looks because great. you're racist against Canadians. I get it. I'm not, racist. Yeah. I'm not racist. I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling that game. That's fine. That's fine. I'll make but it I'm, I'm baby ass baby, baby mode for you. Yeah, one that's, day. A, that's a problem. He needs what, baby though, mode. He needs... It looks great, and the I don't know why I'm lashing out like this. I don't. I don't. I, it's only because you said no offense and you were defensive about <laughs> that I'm like like latching at you. Um, I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Sean, I just what know is you're uh, passionate about it, Sean? Sean, what is your your number five game? I'm not. I'm not that honestly. I feel weird about the whole thing. I'm not that passionate about anything right now. Like in the in terms of this. That sounded very depressing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, passionate no, about, yeah. <laughs> not about any of these games. I, I feel like I wouldn't fight to the death over any of these, to be honest. But my number five is um, Resident Evil 7. I think that if they chop that game in half, it climbs up the charts big time. Yeah. But I got to a certain point in the game where I just wanted it to be at the end. And my playthrough of it was like really helped along with a uh, with a guide. Like I got like I only wanted to be stuck for so long and then it just kind of wanted to be done and then by the time i got there it was mostly action but that's my that's my number five pick bobby okay i can't believe it's up this high compared to some of the other picks but yeah i, I that kind of threw me off a little bit too i, I wasn't expecting yeah. to make the top five but whatever um joseph what's your number five 
Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay, good. We'll put a one on it. <laughs> uh, uh, Re- Resident Evil as well. I think uh, you chop that game in half. I think this could have been a game of the year contender, but because that one part that puts you in a certain situation that turns the game from horror to action, I didn't feel that. I didn't. Yeah, just I don't like that. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, myself, I'm giving Resident Evil Seven, you know, one point. Um, it just, I, I think it's good what they did. They came back, they stormed back. Um, yeah. Resident Evil got a bad rap for a long period of time. Like, it, it just seemed like it wasn't going to be able to come out from underneath itself for mm-hmm. a while there. And it has, you know. It, 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 this gets like series comeback of the year, maybe. Oh, absolutely. Something like that. And and let's be honest, it totally gave virtual reality some relevance this year. Like, it's mm-hmm. the yep. one game that I feel that like 90% of the people that played it tried to play it in, in no, I would say 90%. That's a bit that's a bit much. But a good portion of the people that played it only wanted to play it in virtual reality. And I don't know how you do that because that game would draw, oh, man, I would lose my mind playing a game yeah. like that in virtual reality. But a lot of people did. I, and um, so I give that I give that its credit that it, it actually helped virtual reality because up to that point, it was a lot of tech demos. Yeah, um, and, and still this, is. Yeah, it, it still is. And this is the first one that actually is like, here's a game. This is what we're doing. Okay. Even Batman VR, like as good as that was supposedly was, that felt like a lot of felt like a, a, a big tech demo per se. This yeah. game was actually a game built within. So, Joseph, do you have VR? I used to. I used to. Do, do you see me... it's going on sale like over the holidays and stuff here? There's like taking a hundred bucks off Dude, of it. Like... It's it, there's a sale right now till the twenty fourth, one ninety nine here. That's tempting. Like I hate all the cords and everything. That's kind of tempting to me. Ex- yeah, no, that's super tight. Like if you if you're on the fence, that's a perfect price. And like yeah. you have disposable income, that's the perfect price for it. For me, honestly, Resident Evil was the last game I played on it, and I just I I can't do it because I'm way too I get way too sick. I, I you, even yeah, tried the waste point. thingy. Oh really? Where Bob it, it and it. no man, Eve. I, I I felt like I was about to die. So yeah. Uh, okay, we're back to Toby. What is your number four game on the list? It's Horizon Zero Dawn. Ooh. You know what, Toby? And... I don't like it. And I, you, we could have been great <laughs> friends. <laughs> and the main reason I, I feel this way about it is I feel that Zelda really hurt that game for me. Yeah. They came out just about the same time. And Zelda just hooked me immediately and gave me so much freedom straight away that Horizon just felt really constricted for me. And just... The whole sort of experience of combat in that game, I just, I felt it, I don't know, it just, it didn't feel great to me. Graphics are amazing, uh, unbelievable, and and the acting in it is great as well, but I don't know, I just, I don't enjoy playing that game like I do Zelda, and they're, you know, they're two big open world games, and so, yeah, it's been affected by Zelda. It's cool, Toby, you're dead to me, that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Sean, what's your... Man, I kind of wish I wasn't going second here because my number four and number three picks are they have to be strategic, Bobby, because (laughs) I have to try and anticipate what everybody else is doing. Neither of these games should be uh, they're not don't really love either of these games, Bobby. So my number four pick. My number four pick is Horizon, but my number three pick. Ooh. Ooh. Don't tell you us. Don't, you don't say number three. Number four, that's all you I say. I know, but I was just I wasn't no. gonna tell you what it was, but number three pick, just because it's number three, it's kinda tied for number six with all these others. Jesus. Whoa, whoa, what? I'm just kidding, all that's right. too harsh. Let me drink some more coffee because yeah, I'm not you, making you any do, sense. Yeah. Get Shut nasty up, Bobby. In two minutes here if we don't get I'm not getting nasty. I'm, I'm not just, getting I'm nasty. I'm just telling you. I'm just conflicted. I, I'm, I'm predicting the future that if we don't get coffee in you, <laughs> you start to get nasty. Drink your coffee. Relax. <laughs> All right. Relax. Just drink your coffee. <laughs> Joseph, relax what is Joseph? Caffeine. What is your number? Uh, your number four game. Uh, you guys are gonna. F- I, I, I listen. He's trying. He's, gonna, knew, he's throwing shade now. He's gonna do I, this. I he's knew. doing this only for the fact of pulling down points. Go ahead. No, I know. I I I I put I put this here. If if this was before the game awards, this would have been my number three. I'm putting it number four um, after the game awards, and that's Mario Odyssey. Okay. 
Okay. Mario Odyssey did not grip me. And to be completely honest, if I have to wait all the way to the end of the game for it to give me that <gasps> moment, you failed. And I think Mario Odyssey is a great game. It just did not hook me like it, like even some of the games like, like Resident Evil did. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry. I just want to say that I predicted your pick perfectly. So my I did a really? last minute change. Uh-huh. I did a last minute switch because oh. I knew you were going to do that. So now I'm OK. <laughs> my my strategy is perfect. Wow. Oh, I, I'm going to pick like I'm going to like if I need a strategist, I'm going to pick Sean. I'm also very good at rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, <shit>. um, <laughs> for me, my, my number four game is Cuphead. Um, mm. You know, I, it's not a game I have played, but it is a game I watched a lot of footage of. I am anticipating playing it this year. Uh, just haven't played it yet. I'm anticipating getting it for Christmas, so I will have definitely played it by the end of the year. But from what I've seen of it, um, it's it's... It's a good game. It's a great game, but it's just to me, it's, it's of this list. It doesn't deserve to go much higher than where number four. So I'm putting it number four. Um, Toby, what is your number three game? Resident Evil Seven. Okay. And okay. it's a bit higher on my list because I just feel like what it did for Resident Evil as a franchise was mm-hmm. very important, and the way that they've introduced the, the first person perspective. Like I said it last week that. They're sort of really changing up the horror experience for Resident Evil, and I think that's more important than people realize. Yeah. Um, Sean, number three. Only because of positional play, Super... Well, that sounds harsher than I mean it. Super Mario Odyssey. Okay. This game has not gripped me, It's and it's it's a me thing. This is a conflict. This is... Right. I, I identify that this is... An absolutely solid game. I think as objective as you get with with reviews and providing opinion. I think it's like it's as good as you can as good as you can ask for. And so my ranking at number three is not a reflection on the quality of the game. It's a it's a reflection on my attachment to the game. And it just it feels like more work to go and play it than it is like this gravitational pull that I just can't put my switch down. I just haven't had that that addicting run um, that I feel like some of you guys have had with it so it's kind of a it's an identity crisis for me bobby because i want to I, this is a per, by all measures this is a perfect mario game and i should absolutely love it but i'm i'm off playing other things makes sense makes total sense. yeah you're feel like that's that's my same exact feelings sean mm-hmm. it's just like want to love you i want to so bad but eh, like there's nothing wrong great. with it but, it's really yeah, good. exactly but there's nothing wrong with it it's just like I just don't have any feeling going back to any of the worlds. And that yeah. sucks. Yep. Uh, Joseph, what is your number three game on the list? Um, I put it here after the Game Awards. Uh, we're going to get very Canadian. I'm going to say Cuphead deserves uh, number three. Okay. Even debatably, I was even debating putting this on the number two slot. Mm-hmm. Just because this, this isn't... These aren't hundreds of people working on this game. This isn't you know, a big corporation backing this game. This isn't Legend of Zelda. This isn't Mario. This isn't Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a handful of people drawing frame by frame everything. Having this unique style that, like, no matter what game, you know, no matter how long time passes, this game will last the test of time because it is it is so, so well done in terms of its art style, its music, I will even say this, like at this point in time, it had better music than Mario Odyssey. Because as much as I love the Mario music, it's all the music we've heard before. Mm-hmm. Whereas Cuphead's like roaring trumpets, like those were like some music that we haven't heard before, but it was so right to the era it was in that it just felt so great. The the game itself is so beautiful. And when you think of what is gaming art. This is the first game I, I will I will think of from here on out. So good job, Canada, and Justin Trudeau for shouting it out. <laughs> uh, for me, Super Mario Odyssey is my number three game. Um, I truly feel like I I loved Mario Odyssey. I think the one to me the one major flaw with this game was they just made the moons very irrelevant within the game. Yeah. Um, predictable too it, it, they became the Kirok seeds of mario odyssey and it was like you had the major ones that would 
pull you kind of back to the Odyssey, and then you would go back into the world, per se. You never really truly left the world, like in, you know, in Galaxy or in, in, in uh, Mario 64. But you you did have that reset of some sorts a little bit. But it just it, it felt like I loved the game. Yeah. I played it a lot. It just got to this point where it was just like, man, it's just a lot of samey. You know, it's a lot of the same old, same old after a while. And I do like the fact that they they made some major changes. Uh, Cappy, for one. Um, but, like, and, and this comes from Colin last night. He made a comment that was like, the open world kind of felt too open. You know, mm-hmm. when you hit these open world areas... It, there was a lot of space within, and they didn't fill that with a lot of stuff. So, hearing him say that last night really triggered something within me, and I was just like, "Yeah, he's he's right." Like, it just feels like there's a lot of open patches to it. Um, it's a it's a great game. I don't feel like it's my top Mario game. I still feel like Galaxy does it better. Um, I feel like mm. 3D, I actually I'll go as far as to say like I like 3D World better than this one. Um, Whoa. And and I feel like 3D World was a lot more fun. I played it longer. I, I had the desire to go for more stars, to get all the stars in that game, mm-hmm. to go through it with different characters and get the stars. Yep. This one just didn't do it for me. I'm I mean, shocked to hear you that, Bobby. I felt the exact same way. Yeah. I beat every level. I've got every single thing you can possibly do in 3D World, except for that very, very last level, which is impossible. Anybody who tells you that they beat it, they're lying to you, just like anybody (laughs) who tells you that they beat Mike Tyson. Liar. I'm the same as you. I'm. I'm. So I'm. I'm. I feel better hearing you saying that. I'm just kidding. I mean, but have you shown it? Has anybody actually seen you do it, Bobby? Um, anybody showed me doing it. Has anybody seen you beat Mike Tyson? I I'm asking pic- I got pictures, on, I know, Insta- I I got pictures on Instagram. I know. Of just Mr. Relax. Dream Lane knocked out. Just take it easy. Yeah, but Mike Tyson, I said. I yeah, but we need a picture you of you in the room, Bobby. That's the one thing. Is like <laughs> anybody can take a picture of anything. Just you know? Anyway, Toby, what is your number <laughs> four game? Or your number? I'm sorry, your number two game. What's your number two game? So me, me saying what this is, you know what my number one pick is as well. Okay, so... Whatever. Anyway, but to my save, number... the, save the talk for number one. Right? Mario Odyssey. Okay. Um, now this game is absolutely amazing to play. Like playing it, the experience of playing it and moving Mario around is, I would say, near nearly perfect. But I think what lets it down in terms of game of the year is it's not as memorable as I thought it would be. Like when I look back at my experience playing it, I only remember about four or five worlds. And even what I did in those worlds, like you were saying, Bobby, the moons become less meaningful the more that you pick up. You know, it's like Nintendo had sort of some sort of ADHD thing going on. Like every single way, you know, every way you look in that game, there's a moon to pick up. Like there's not a moment where your attention is like focused really, Mm -hmm. apart from like boss fights and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I think that's why it didn't quite get my game of the year is just because of that, really. Yeah. Um, I don't agree with anything you just said. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Sean, Sean, what is your number two game? Number two of this list is Cuphead. This is a wonderfully handcrafted game made by 20 people who put their life on the line, essentially, their their way of life anyways. Um, they believed in the vision, and they came through. They wowed us originally with the first look at it, uh, went through a bunch of changes in terms of the yeah. scope of the game. Um, you know, it, it resembled development hell for a long time. People were really worried about this game and thinking the boss rushes aren't going to be enough. Oh, they're going back, and they're changing it with, the, uh, with a little bit more platforming. Everything just worked. Uh, from the moment you picked it up, it had a perfectly simple tutorial. This is how you move. This is how you double jump and dash. And you got your parries. And that's how you get a little bit more power up to tip the scales more in your favor. Cuphead is truly, truly special. And I can't tell if I want more or if they should just leave this as a like a capsule of what was so great about 2017. It is incredibly memorable and entirely unique. And the 
the sort of difference, the juxtaposition between the cartooniness and the difficulty, and not only the difficulty, but the the tone of the story is so bizarre. Yeah. They they're yeah. at this casino and then they they roll the dice and lose their souls to the devil. And to to try and save their their uh, save their souls, they got to go collect other souls. Like this is a very cartoon. You're fighting these carrots that shoot like that cry on your rain, little baby carrots that kill you. So strange, so special. Cuphead is way more memorable than anything that we've talked about so far. Absolutely deserves to be within the conversation of Game of the Year. Totally. Number two for me. Joseph, your number two game. Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll, if I can say one thing, we're at the point where I think any of these games could be number one. Like, I really do think like Cuphead could be number one, Zelda yep. Horizon, like, they could be number one. Totally fine with it. With that said, uh, Zelda is my number two. And I'll say this, Colin Moore, you already said something really good last night, which, uh, you know, is something I don't think Nintendo fans want to say often, but that is that when a Nintendo game comes out, there is that Nintendo bump that comes attached to it. Like when he said like Mario Odyssey is not a nine, I'm like, no, it isn't. I actually think it's kind of like it's 7.58. Like it's a great game, very good game, but it's, it's not like this incredible feat. And when I look at, Legend of Zelda, though it's a game that I've beaten twice this year, I can say almost definitively that it's not the best Zelda. It's not even close. And though it's a really, really, really good game, it to me isn't 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 this this thing that everybody's making it out to be. Like I think in world design, level design, it's it is the best game out here. Like I, I, any of them, it just does things. It, it, it it's that whole thing with Skyrim where it's like you see that mountain, well, you can actually climb that mountain. You can actually be the highest peak of it, and that's really awesome. And that's the gimmick of Breath of the Wild. The thing that <coughs> troubles me about Breath of the Wild is there is no dungeons. Um, the 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 elements that we fight are the the bosses are variants of the same boss over and over again. They're not challenging. Ganon is a joke of a boss. There is no story unless you try to find it in these like beaming lights that are very, very random and, sp- and sparse. And so for me, I'm like, the story's not that great. There are no Legend of Zelda dungeons that we know to love. Shrines don't do it for me. And the combat sucks. Like, So I'm like, this is a flawed game. It's a really, really great game <laughs> with all the negative I'm shooting at it. But it, it is a really great game. But I just feel like in a couple of years, when we take off the glasses, we'll be like, yeah, no, there's fa- faults here. You know, it's kind of like like Force Awakens. We all really love Force Awakens. I think it's one of my favorite Star Wars. But yeah, no, it is a copy of, of New Hope. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so with that, I would say Zelda to me, Breath of the Wild, is my number two because it's really, really good. It's just not the best thing I played this year. Bobby, sounds you like you didn't like sit it. There? Are you just going to, yeah, that's number two. You're just going <laughs> to sit there, Bobby. What did Splatoon well, because get I when it to, came I out? Have to point Let out me ask you a question. Because... What did Splatoon get when it when it released? What's the Metacritic on Splatoon? It's low. It's like seven? seven, yeah. Seven, huge Nintendo boost. Huge, huge Nintendo. What did, what did Captain Toad get when it was released? It was 7.9? Something like that, yeah. Massive Nintendo boost. What are some other games that we should talk about the well, Nintendo I'm, boost? I'm you know about, what? I'm talking Stop about regurgitating this crap. You know what, Sean? I told I totally agree with Sean here. I feel oh, like okay. say, what what Colin said is a little bit insulting to our intelligence. Absolutely, you know? it's like we well, can't. Think, apparently, if we just eat it up, it's yeah, not we can't think intelligence. critically about games. I think you know. I think separately from nostalgia, let's, like, let's, it's let's not across it. the board. Hold on, let's hold on, Bobby. Hold on, hold on. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze rated too high. Here's the thing. <laughs> with with regards with regards to Mario. Yeah. I agree with Colin's critique. But Joseph's playing some liberties with that. Oh, boy. <laughs> because Colin did say, like, he did agree with Zelda, but he hasn't played Zelda yet. So That's true. He's, he's kind of going off of the same belief pattern. Also, I would like to say Splatoon got an 8.5, and it's a well-deserved 8.5. Splatoon 2 or 1? Uh, oh, 2. Um. <clears throat> So the thing is, is this. Mm-hmm. Well, let me jump into mine first. 
Um, sure, sure. We'll do my number two, and then we'll come back to correct Mr. Moran. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Um, my number two <clears throat> is Horizon, um, and and that's because everything that I've seen in this game is gorgeous. Everything that I've I've paid attention to so far is just a home run. It is another game that I will definitely play by the end of this year. Um, but I haven't gotten to it yet, but I have done my research on it. I have looked at it, um, but it has some flaws to me from what I've seen so far. Um, there are glitches in the game. There are um, the fact that you can't climb over mountains and you got to run around mountains. Major, major issue. Um, mm. when Facial the- animations as bad as Mass Effect Andromeda. The thing of it is, is like if you want to, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Some of them are, are not minute, great, minute, but a lot of them are good. <laughs> wait a minute, I'm not done. I didn't interrupt you yeah. when you went on your spiel. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So, Sean so, is, he's I'm triggering. just helping Bobby so, out a little bit. I'm not I don't, I don't need help though. with that. Trust me, because because here's the thing: when you put out an open world game, don't be messed up. Nintendo did that. Nintendo was able to put out an open world game without glitches, without flaws. It was one of the perfect games for this year. To see that this company took the time it took, the delays that hit were warranted. Um, the only issue was a slowdown issue that was a Wi-Fi issue. It had nothing to do with the game yeah. itself, and they corrected it within two weeks. There was no gigantic day one patch. You didn't have to do all this crazy stuff to get the game playing. Um it, it just, to me, if you're going to launch a system, you launch a system with the game of the year. And, you know, if you're going to come years later and try to compete with a system, you, tr- you, you bring a game like Horizon, but that just wasn't enough to do the, to do the damage. Um, Horizon is a good game, but it's not enough to be game of the year, in my opinion. And, um, it, you know, I felt like, and I've always felt like, the Mario Zelda battle could push horizon to the top but as we got closer to all this the realization started to come through that like mario's not enough to pull votes from zelda it never was and you know at the end of the day like horizon's a good game it's not a great game and that's just how i feel on it um let's go to our number ones because this is where i think we're gonna have i don't want to say too much about you know what it is but um toby well let's do this Because, I, I mean, the way it's all boiled out, we're going to do the one or two. Joseph, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you rally against what I just said and, and, and do what you want to do. Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> 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 oh, boy, what a bad game. No, uh, yeah, it's Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. And so, okay, um, for me, uh, action-wise... The thing, the reason why I'm picking this game over Horizon is for me, um, the combat is better. Just hands down better. Yeah, I don't have to worry about anything breaking in middle of combat. If I'm running out of arrow shots, I can replenish them easily, which doesn't make any sense. But hey, I'm down. Um, You know, combat's better. The story to me is super gripping. You know, it, it. it, be- it begins with this revenge tale, and then it goes into something. It asks these questions along the way, kind of like breadcrumbing you along, and it answers everything. And like like I said last time, I say it again, Horizon's a really great game because on its own, it's fantastic. And it's kind of like A New Hope, where like A New Hope, hey man, you destroyed the Death Star. You don't really need... need all of these other Star Wars movies because it's a great movie on its own. Kind of like Horizon is. It answers all the questions you want it to and then just go, well, how are we going to get a sequel out of this? Because you you literally answered all my questions. Aloy, for me, is a character of a generation. I think she is, for me, the best character that we've seen in a generation yet. She, I see myself in Aloy. I see her troubles. I see what she's trying to like it's like a coming of age story and it's it's one that's far better than than any i've seen voice acting wise is phenomenal i think um ashley birch kills it as aloy uh and i think she is one of the reasons why this game is so great is just because of her performance when it comes to the facial animations 
Most of them, nine times out of ten for me, if they are a main character, I see no problem with whatsoever. There is one or two that come to mind. I know there might be more, but it's nowhere as near as bad as as it, it's it's those two or three performances are not dragging down an experience for me. Uh, so for me, story wise, the boss fights, the fact that like the one thing I would love to do in this game is just go around fighting a giant, you know, t- robot T Rex that you would think makes no sense, but actually really does, and how fun that is to fight. And then going in and fighting a giant robot phoenix, but in a totally different way. Like, every fight is its own and different situation. Like, there's even invisible robots that come later in the game, and they're a totally unique fighting experience. When it came to something like Legend of Zelda, it just became bash these guys, dodge, and you're going to probably you know, win this fight nine times out of ten. It wasn't a challenge to it, where I felt Horizon nailed that challenge. So for me... What Zelda got wrong, Horizon did right, and the things that Zelda got right, um, or, or you know, Horizon also did, but just Zelda just did a little better job. So, to me, it's it's more like it's squeaking out a victory uh, rather than you know, it's a it's a total blowout because I think both games are really great. It's just I came to this conclusion in I think October where where I keep having man, I want to go back to Horizon. And even with this DLC with with Zelda, I kind of, I can, I can, I can, I can play it and I, I could drop it. I don't know. Like, I'm not tethered to go back, you know? I mm. guess is the word. So, okay. thank you for having this rant. Now I'm going to be yelled at for it. Yeah. 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 Invisible right. enemies, I don't like in any game. Well, these are cool. I'll say that. No. They suck. Oh, okay. oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to put a point down because of visible. And that hour-long tutorial at the start is just crap. What's that? The hour-long tutorial at the start is just terrible. It's really, now, really I will, slow I will say going this. I will start. say this. The, the, the first few hours, it, it is, it is uh, a slow burn. But I, I equate that to like something like Red Dead Redemption, where if you told me if we're basing this whole entire game off the first hour, Red Dead Redemption is one of the worst games I've ever played. But if I take the after that hour or two, mm. and then I go, is Red Dead Redemption one of the greatest games ever made? Hands down. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. I agree with that. Yeah, good point. Um, so at this point, we have a winner. Because <clears throat> um, I'm we're not. We're not. The, the next Chicken three, it the next three are uh, are Zelda voice, Zelda votes. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so that pushes us to where it is. So Zelda is our game of the year. But real quick, not even real quick, we'll we'll have a discussion now. Toby, um, why was Zelda given your number one vote? So Zelda is my favorite gaming franchise, um, and this is probably the only game that I have played where i felt truly sort of immersed in the world and i think that nintendo did such a great job of making that world feel alive and massive and just there's so much to do in it um that just you know their decision of not putting music everywhere plays a big part in that and you really feel like an explorer or an adventurer and there was times where I had the opportunity to fast travel to get somewhere to do something I needed to do, but I just enjoyed running around that world so much that I would take the time to run across the map or jump on a horse or whatever to get across the map, you know. And just the whole act of going to places in that game and discovering new things is such an important part of gaming for me, is just mm. discovering things and having fun like within the game itself. Not you know, not necessarily being led down a path like it's so open. You can go anywhere and do whatever you want, and the the physics engine in the game as well makes that very enjoyable. You know, there's so many different ways of doing things and solving puzzles and everything. Like you know, it, I do miss things like dungeons, like proper crafted dungeons. You know, but the shrines are kind of a good sort of different way of doing a dungeon you know it's sort of but i don't like motion controls that well, one dungeon that one shrine you, you like, just turn your controller Dude. upside down i did i did all the time and it was just like nope i'm not gonna work and i'm like are you serious <laughs> well, 
Are you serious, game? I don't oh, think it's that, that bad. I'm riding my gears. Get, There's get, two of them that do that. Get, they get good. die in a fire. Get, 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 yeah. I agree. You know what? <laughs> I can't wait till you buy Dark Souls when it comes to the Switch, <sighs> Bobby. And you're like, Sean, you keep on dying. Sean, what's uh, what, what what's your, what's your feel for Zelda? Okay, I want to take a direct shot at Joseph <laughs> for it. saying that the combat is no good. Here's why the combat is great, and it actually has to do with the point that Toby just made, which is the physics engine allows you to do whatever you want. Yeah. So if you're up against uh, an enemy that is way out of your league, you can look around you and go, OK, my sword isn't very powerful, but maybe I can light this guy on fire. Maybe I can electrocute or maybe maybe I can roll this boulder down the hill and take some good damage out of him. It it gives you this world that you go, hey, mate, what if I try this? Oh, that works because it would work in the real world and it works there. And that sense of discovery that like, oh, this actually is going to help me along. And I. Don't know why I even tried it because other games wouldn't let me do it. It mm. it allows you to do it, and then it actually makes a difference in your experience. And that is, to me, is probably one of the biggest reasons that it's so high up on my list. And it is my game of the year. Um, so that's the that's the combat thing. I think that if you just look at like the swinging of the sword, that's just one aspect that's way too. It's diminishing what is all there for it uh i normally hate this style of game bobby i normally hate like the skyrim thing everybody talks about i want to play skyrim for 1200 hours that sounds brutal to me i mm. normally think that just wandering around the world and just just running around sounds sounds terrible that's all i want to do in this game and i said that to you about five hours in going i might this may be my forever game mm. and i kind of am upset mm. that i have it as a physical copy because i want this just I could just, I should just be able to play this whenever I want and just go jump into Hyrule and play around. Final thing I'll say is that it is so bold and the balls on this game to say, okay, you're coming out of the tomb of resurrection or whatever. Go fight Ganon if you want. Yeah. What the hell, man? That is incredible. And it's, and it's doable. Yes. So we've seen people do, do that, go straight to Ganon and beat the game. And that is just I, I don't know, man. I don't know what else to say other than the fact that only Nintendo can pull that off, and only in a game like Zelda is that possible. That's why it's Game of the Year. Story is never first and foremost for me. Gameplay is is first. The design of this game is next level. is taking us to new places, and that to me is what defines a Game of the Year. For me, <clears throat> I want to I want to answer a couple questions that Joseph said, like the weapons breaking and such. I feel yeah. like, yeah, the weapons break a lot in the beginning of the game. You're, you're, you're picking up rusty swords and things like that, tree branches. Of course mm. they're not going to last forever. They're going to break down pretty immediately. Um, no one expects a rusty sword or a rusty shield to last forever. Um, as you go through and you progress and your weapons get stronger and stronger, it's less of a breakage. It's not, they don't break as quickly. And, and as you progress through the game and you get to these other levels, you're getting better swords and better weapons and things like that. Mm. I love the fact that, like Sean said, you can use, like last night I was playing the DLC and there was a section where there's electric and stuff going on and I needed to get a, get a, an electric jump about, you know, two foot or way. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I'm like, well, how can I do this? I got no more blocks. I got nothing to do to make this work. And I'm like, wow, I can use a shield. And I drop a shield down and it's not enough. And I drop a second shield down and create a chain from the electric to the hub. And boom, mm-hmm. it opens up this door. And I was like, that is awesome. Like you can't do yeah. that in any other game. Mm-hmm. That to me is like just ingenious things to go, Wow. And here's the other thing. You take a game like Zelda and you drop it in the world. And in the very beginning, Sean and and Toby and I had a conversation and it was like we all kind of were doing the same things, but we were in totally different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And we were having totally different experiences. Every time you talk to somebody, they had a different experience than you. And it's like... When you play a game like Horizon or you talk to people and it's kind of, yes, it's open world, kind of linear, you know, where where the progression of the story, that's what I liked about this. The progression of the story, my story was told to me differently than it was told to Toby, than it was Mm -hmm. told to Sean. I experienced it differently because I, I very immediately recognized, hey, if Nintendo hid these story pieces throughout the world, I need to go find them. 
And that became a mission for me to go find them. And I would look at the pictures on the, you know, the pictures in my camera and go, okay, that's where that is. I've seen that before. Let me try to figure out what it was. And it became another aspect of the game that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. It was much more fun than going to find Kirok seeds and all that stuff. But like the other thing too, to, to kind of go back to the breaking of the weapons, by the time I got further along, I also had a whole plethora of weapons because I'm unlocking it and making it more weapons. So if a weapon broke, I didn't care. I pulled another one out of the arsenal and went to war. It just was what it was. <laughs> I didn't worry about it, you know? So to answer the question of how you're battling things, I don't care what anybody says. Dude, them cannon battles aren't just hack and slashes. You got to use some some battle to like some wits about you to go like, okay, I need to attack him in this particular manner. You know, it's not just a run up to him and start hitting him with a sword and then he dies. You know, there's there's a, a method to the madness that you're doing with that. When you go when you go approach a, a guardian for the first time, it's not a go hack and slash. You're trying to figure out how to get away from him, how to figure it out, how do I take out the yeah. eye and all that stuff. So there are moments in the game. Yeah, when I go <clears throat> when I go to a begoblin, of course they're the weakest enemy in the in the game. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be hard, but you know when you go in and you like you look at these things like you throw a, a, a bomb at you know a moblin and the moblin mm -hmm. walks around the bomb because the, the <laughs> moblin's smart enough to go no yeah, I'm that's gonna awesome. blow that up like that's that's where yeah. you're looking at it. It's a different type of game. The AI in this game is phenomenal. It picks yeah. up on your 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 method and what you're doing and goes no no no, no. I'm not some easy kill for you. I'm going to make this a little difficult for you. That doesn't happen in other games that are open world. And mm -hmm. and I keep harping on this, and I don't think people are getting it. And, and it, it's like zero glitches. That is massive for an open world game, a hundred and something hour game, to have nothing happen where it's where it's like, this game's broken. I got to wait for a patch to move forward. It does not happen. Like, that yeah. is unheard of insane like it's mm. just unbelievable and that has to be stressed because of the fact of like yes this is nintendo's first foray into that they looked at what everybody else was doing and they made sure it was fixed and to completion and it was done why because they don't live in the world even though we can put patches in the fix stuff they don't live in that world they mm -hmm. for people that mock nintendo for living in the past in this instance it's an ideal thing they live mm -hmm, in the yeah. past in an era where they weren't able to do patches. That that game had to be shipped to perfection or it wasn't going out. Because if it was broken, nobody would have went back to play it by the time they fixed it. They'd have just been like, I'm done, I'm on, and I'm moving on to the next game. Nintendo gets that, and they fix it, yeah. and they make sure it's perfect every time. Yeah. So for me, I look at it and I go, it's a no-brainer that this game should be Game of the Year. The, f the first trailer, if anybody had any an inkling or any disbelief that this game was going to be game of the year, they're lying to themselves because inkling when, boy or girl, when you saw that, when you saw <laughs> that original trailer at the, at the switch launch, everybody exploded and was like, this game is amazing. The voice acting. Perfect. Oh, dude, it, they oh really? It, I think man. it's awful. They it's awful. It. The voice acting. <laughs> oh God, dude. The, uh, uh, what's this guy? The guy that lives in the lava place. Oh God. Daruk. Yeah, dude. Oh, God. The cringiest of all oh, voices. Yeah, you, you gotta I, listen but, to but, it in but, Japanese. But, I, but exactly. I like it. I, don't I have understand any where they're coming it. from. That's why I don't, like, knock it down. But to me, I'm just like, oh, God, put a bullet in my head. I, I just have, can't take it. I don't have any issue with the voice acting. Except I'll tell you sexy, what, right? sexy shark man. This, can, this game, like, is has so many sort of uh, moments that just happen to you when you're you're walking around the world that aren't scripted they just happen like yeah. things that happen to you in the game and like like i was saying earlier like it's so immersive like when i first started the game i was just walking along and a thunderstorm just came out of nowhere and i come across this little wooden shelter it's like a bus shelter and there was a guy underneath it um with a fire and i just went up to him sat by the fire with him and just waited the storm out and mm -hmm. that moment was so memorable to me like you couldn't imagine just sitting in a game doing nothing, just listening to the rain. Like, yeah. but I did it in this game. And it felt good to do that. Also, and... if this game was raining all the time, let's be honest, it would not no, be game it? of the year. 
<laughs> There's no there way to climb a the damn thing. <laughs> there was a moment where, like, the Guardians, right? My yeah. first encounter with a Guardian, I was near Hyrule Castle, and it came up behind me and it chased me, and I was so terrified, I literally hid under a rock, right? Or <laughs> just, it was like, by all the broken fountains and stuff, and it was, like, hunting me down. I could hear it, and I was just terrified. And by the end of the game, I... I changed so much as a character. I'd upgraded myself and got stronger and I was hunting them down. And that, that change is so cool in a game Mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. It's just, it's brilliant. It was like, uh, it was like predator. It was amazing. Yeah. You put put some mud on you. You know, I'm going to go hunt me some guardians. So that is all. Thank you guys for checking out our game of the year, which is the legend of Zelda breath of the wild. Contrary to what Joseph wanted he wanted trash to be it. I'm, just not I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it, Bobby. Stop it. You made not, some very good arguments. Stop I thought it. this was not, it's a great not, pick. We're, we're moving on. We're done. You lost. We wait, won. Hey, Bobby. But, but, wait, have you got you the, have them the, in order? Like, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, the order so it's, them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What's it matter? So it's Zelda, I'm interested. Breath, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, Super Mario Three. Odyssey, Cuphead, right. Resident Evil 7. Just yeah, I think that's probably the correct order overall. Yeah. Just like how I wanted, Bobby. This is my whole plan. To be number two, that's good. Yeah. If you want to, yeah. if you're, if, if goal I could in, get a, if, if goal I could in life get... is to aim for second place, you got it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always yeah, aiming exactly. for number two. No one so, ever goes after the number two guy. Everybody's going after number one guy. I'm sitting here in my throne. I have nothing to worry about. Okay, that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us on iTunes, uh, Google Play. Checking out the video version over on YouTube.com forward slash Nintendo Guru. Check us out over on Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash Make Us Better. You can follow Toby over on the Twitters at Toby's underscore Take Sean Capri. Sean like Connery Capri like the pants and Mr. Bad Bit. I am Nintendo Gurus. Thank you guys, as always. Peace out, Preston. Ciao. 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 Hola. What is up, Bobby? Ha <laughs> ha